Okay, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to copy records based on a criteria. For example, in my scenario, I might want to copy records for a particular branch to a new sheet. Now, the way we're gonna do it here is with the VBA macro that I've developed. And the code for that macro is available via a link in the description of this video. So I'll show you how to set it up, create buttons for it, etc. I'll give you some examples of how it works. All you need to do is click somewhere in the data. Now I've created a button on my ribbon to run this macro. I'll show you how to do that later on. So I click on the button and it asks me which column I want to apply my first criteria to. So let's say our first criteria is gonna be based on branch. Now the position of that column is two, click on okay. And then I need to specify a criteria for that column. So let's say it's York, click on okay. Now you can specify up to 25 different criteria, but if you're happy with that one criteria, you would click on cancel at this point. And you can see it's created a sheet called filtered records and it has all those York records on it. Now, if you want to keep this sheet, rename it. Otherwise, next time you run the macro, it will get replaced. So let's do a more complex macro. Let's do an AND criteria where we have criteria relating to two different columns. So both criteria need to be met in order for the record to be copied. So we'll do it on branch again. So that's uh, column two. And we'll say it's York. But then we'll also say that we only want transactions performed on the web. So the position of the customer type column is four. And the criteria for that is web. So I only need two criteria. I don't need a third one. So I click on cancel. And you can see it's returned those records. Now, what about all criteria? So you might want to say, for example, you want to return records where the customer type is store or web. So the position of the column is four. Now to specify all criteria, you write your criteria in separated by a comma, store comma web. I'm only wanting one criteria, so I click on cancel and you can see it returns those records. Now what about between criteria? Let's do it between $500 and $800. So the position of the column is five. Now all you do is you type 500 and 800. Click on okay. Don't want any more criteria, so I click on cancel. Now this time it's gonna permanently delete the previous filtered record sheet because I didn't rename it. You can see I have the relevant records in this sheet. Now you can also use comparison operators with this macro. Let's specify criteria for column A, date column. Now my computer set up for US dates, but I could say for example, greater than or equal to the 1st of September 24. Click on okay. Don't want to specify any other criteria, so I cancel. It's going to delete the previous filtered record sheet. You can see it's returned the relevant results. Now, when you're running this macro, your data can be in any column or row. It doesn't have to start in cell A1. Okay, so how do you install the macro? Well, you need to follow the link in the description of this video and then copy the VBA code. And to install it, you need to open up the Visual Basic Editor. Now there's two ways you can do that. You can do it with a shortcut key, Alt F11. Or if you prefer, you can do it via the developer tab. And if you can't see the developer tab on your ribbon, right click on one of the other tabs, doesn't matter which one, customize the ribbon. And then just make sure developer is ticked there. Click on okay. Click on the developer tab and click on this Visual Basic button. Now, once you're in the Visual Basic Editor, you need to add a module. So insert module, there's your module. And then you just simply paste your code into this code window. 
you don't need to make any changes. Now, currently the macro is stored within this particular workbook. So it's only available when this workbook is open. If you want to make the macro available to all workbooks, you need to save it in the personal macro workbook. Currently the personal macro workbook is not appearing in my project explorer, but very briefly to show the personal macro workbook in the visual basic editor, you would need to record a dummy macro to the personal macro workbook. So maybe just select a cell and format it, stop recording, and then it will appear here in this list. And then you can just copy the code to a module within that workbook. Anyway, we've got the macro installed. So then we need some way of running it. Now, as I said, I created a little button on a tab called My Macros. To create that tab and that button, right click on one of the existing tabs, customize the ribbon. Then to create the new tab, all you do is you click down here, new tab, that'll create a new tab for you. And then you can rename it. So you could call it macros. And then you need to rename the group within the tab. And to put your macro button in that group, where it says choose commands from up here, choose macros. And the macro that I've given you is called copy records based on criteria. So you select it, click on add, and then it appears here. If you then click on rename, you can choose a button. And then specify some text for the button. Click on OK. So now if I click on OK here, you can see I've got an additional tab called macros with that button on it. Now, another way you could run the macro is to create a button on your sheet. So if you go to the developer tab, insert under form controls, choose button, draw a button, choose the macro you want to run with the button, click on OK. To change the button text, just click into it and type some new text, click outside the button. You then need to click into your data, click on the button and it will run the macro. Your other option is to set up a shortcut key for the macro. And to do that, go to your macros button. This is on the developer tab. Make sure the macro is selected, go to options, and then you can put in a shortcut key. So control is assumed. So if I did shift and C, the shortcut key would be control shift C. Click on okay, close this down. So if I did control shift C on my keyboard, it would start that macro. Now, if you are saving the macro to this particular workbook rather than the personal macro workbook, you will need to save the workbook with the correct file type, which should be Excel macro enabled workbook.xlsm, and you'll see that in the list of file types. Don't save it as a normal Excel workbook, otherwise, you'll lose this functionality. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.